Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about charts in your React or Next.js application. So we're going to use this React Charts component by Syncfusion. They have a whole suite of enterprise components. One of them is this React Charts component. Syncfusion actually has a community license, so you can use their entire product line for free if your situation is among the requirements that they have here. They also have a free trial. That's actually a very generous uh, community license here. And Syncfusion needs to get the word out, so that's why they're sponsoring this series of videos. So Syncfusion actually offers many different types of charts. I have a line chart here as the example, but we're going to look at the other types as well because it depends on the type of data that you have for choosing which one to use for example here they have a line chart this is typically used for when you have data and you want to show trends over time and then there is also this area chart which is very similar to just a basic line chart but it has this filled color below the line to sort of indicate the magnitude of the change there's also a bar chart if you want to compare data across categories there's also this column chart which is actually very similar and probably the most common chart they actually also mentioned that and this is similar and here you're also comparing typically some kind of total or frequency or an, or an average between categories. A pie chart is also very common and it's used typically for when you want to compare values proportionally to the other values. And there's also a donut chart, which is very similar. It essentially just has a hole in the middle. All right, so there's also a scatter plot or scatter chart. This is for when you typically have two variables that you want to compare with each other. And there's also a bubble chart, which is very similar to a scatter chart. So here you still have two variables that you want to compare, but you can also change the size of each individual circle, for example, to express a third variable that you may want to compare with each other. All right, so all of these charts have a nice animation. They're responsive out of the box. And I will show you how to add a chart to the page and how to customize it so this is what we want to create so let me quickly remove this for a clean slate so i removed everything right now we just have an empty page here so if i go back it's completely blank so they have a great guide on how to get started even in next.js with the latest server and client components so they have great documentation here let's quickly go through the guide here to set things up i already created a next.js project so let me quickly uh, paste this right here so it's the react charts package all right so install that so now we can add these components let me just so what we need to add here is the root component so we have a chart component that we can import like that and we can customize certain things like give it a title let's say we have some kind of revenue projections so i will give it a title like that and then if you remember we had two lines in the chart so that's a so those are two series so here we have a series collection directive that we can import as well not series so for each line you need to have a series directive done All right so here we have another component for each line and these can be self-closing so we have two and let me input that as well so now we can add the data so these two are going to get the data so i prepared some basic data here let me just add that right here so it's just uh it's just a local it's just an array here with objects so we just have some revenue projections. So for the month of January, we project uh, 35 revenue. In the year 2030, we have that data. For the other year, we have this data, right? So I have some simple local data here. So you may have some local JSON data. Maybe you just have a JSON file of data. You can easily use that as the data source, but you can also use a remote data source. Here is then when you actually attach the data. So here we have data 2030, let's say. And then here we have the other year, right? So we have one line for each year. So this is 2031. All right, so if I save here, we will actually get into an issue because I'm using Next.js here and we need to make this a client component to make this work. Now here I'm in the page component and typically I don't recommend that you make the entire page component a client component because then everything that you import will also become a client component. But for this simple demo project, that's fine, I think. So now when we go back, all right, so by default, you're going to get a message like this because I haven't registered my API key here. So you can actually find that in the dashboard once you sign up and um, they have a free trial. So I'm using a free trial here. So I'm just importing this and uh, registering the license here in this file. So I'm going to save here and then refresh and that should be gone. Okay, you don't, we don't see the actual data yet. So here on the root component of our chart here, we need to determine what should be displayed on the X axis and what should be displayed on the Y axis. So on the horizontal axis, it's going to be an object so we can give it a title so this is going to be for the month and the value type is going to be it's going to be a category and then we want to do the same for the y-axis except the title should be revenue and we can say in us dollars now we can remove the category here and then what we also need to add is here for these directives we need to say for the horizontal axis we're going to give it a name of month and then here for this name it's going to be revenue 
All right, now we get one issue here, and that's because we need to inject a surface here. So within the root component, if you want to enable certain features, the way that Sync Fusion works is you need to inject those as a surface. So it's just a component here that we can import, and then the services that we want to apply to this chart. This is an array. So we want to make this a line series because we could also have other types of charts, right? So it needs to know what type of chart we want to render on the page here. And then we also need to add the category surface here. So category, and if you save there and refresh, now you should see that our chart looks a little bit more like we want it, but we don't actually see the data being rendered here yet. And that's because we still forgot to do one thing here. So each of these two represents one line. So here for this particular line, now we've only config we've only specified the horizontal axis, right? So here we need to make sure that we also add the Y axis for this one, that should be the name of the key in your object here, right? So it will automatically apply uh, whatever the key is, right? So month and revenue, those need to match up with what you're specifying here, right? So for this line, we also need to specify what we want to use for the horizontal axis. So if you add this, and you may need to refresh, but then you see a nice chart here with a nice animation, which shows you the data here. Now by default, it will stretch the entire page, we can also customize that if we go to the root component here, we can actually just specify the width, let's make it 800. And then it's a little bit less wide, I want to center this on the page, we can just do that here with this outer component here. We can use flexbox, justify center horizontal for the horizontal x for horizontal centering, then item center for the vertical it but the page does need to span the entire uh, screen vertically. So now it's centered in the, in the page. Alright, so it may be a little bit better to see for each point the actual data here because for, for example, for this point here, it's a bit difficult to see exactly what revenue this is, I can see it's a little bit more than 80,000 and a little bit less than 90k, but it would be nice if it could just show that here. So we can customize this further. So we're going to add a data label. So we can go to each of these lines here represented by each directive here. So we can say marker. And we can say data label, well that's another object, it should be visible. So we say visible, it should be true. And we want to do the same for the other line. So let's actually copy this and uh, paste this right here. Okay, now this is another surface that we need to inject. Right? So here we need to inject a data label surface. Make sure you import that as well. So now if I refresh the page, you can see that the, it displays the actual number for each point in the data. We may also want to have some kind of legend that explains the chart a little bit better. So that's not a surface that we can inject here. So we can say legend, legend, let's just import that as well. And then the only thing you have to do is here on the root component, we have to set the legend settings, also an object, and we just have to set the visibility to true. Now, if you do that, you still won't see anything because it doesn't know what to display there because we haven't provided any description yet. So if we go to each line here, we can provide a description of what this line represents we can give it a name. So we can say projected revenue in 2030, 2030. And then the other one is projected revenue in 2031. All right, so here, if we do this, and now you can see we have a nice legend here, including the color of the line. All right, now maybe the data label is taking up too much space. So another thing you could do is remove the data label, but if the user hovers it, it will have like a tooltip displaying the information. So let's see, this is not a surface. Right. So once you get the hang of this, it's very easy tooltip, just input that. And then here on the root component, we can say tooltip settings. So we can say tooltip settings. And actually, it's just it's actually just tooltip. And we can just enable that. So then uh, let's see. Yeah, so now when you hover one of these points, it will give you all of the information about that point, right as a tooltip. Right? So you could now also remove the data label if it's taking up too much space. Right. But these are the typical customizations that you would want to make on a chart like this. It's a very powerful component. They have tons of demos on their website, tons of customizations. So check out Syncfusion's React Chart component. Um, and they have lots of demos on the website as well, right? So they have all sorts of demos here for your particular use case. And they show you exactly how to implement that. So check out the other videos in this series if you want to learn about those typical UI components that you're going to have to implement as a developer. And then let's quickly continue with the other component in this series.